Hello friends, welcome back one more time in a new video of the child health related topics. Today's topic is the flu vaccine or influenza vaccine. Today what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss some of the things related with the influenza virus, which type of the virus is this, uh, what are the signs and symptoms of these infections, what are the risks related to the influenza infections. Then we will discuss about the influenza vaccine, how many types of the vaccines are available, which vaccine you should take. There are uh, different dosage schedule of the uh, vaccine as per the children's age group. So all those things we are going to discuss today in this video about the influenza. So influenza virus is a basically respiratory virus. It spread through the air somebody who has the influenza infection can transmit this infection to the other people. Now this flu vi virus is basically the seasonal virus or the influenza virus is a seasonal virus. This type of the infection comes in the seasons like the seasons of the influenza is different in the different different countries. Mostly in the our earth northern hemisphere has this kind of the infection mainly start from around September to March while in the southern part it may be from the April to October. So around if you consider around 4 or 5 months of the uh, year is of uh, infections, influenza infections are quite prevalent. So ideally the flu vaccine to be given before the season starts. So generally uh, September to March in the most of the countries the flu season is there. So around August or September the flu vaccine will be available. So every year the new updated vaccines flu vaccine will be available that we have to administer. Now the flu virus per se it is a round virus and it has a lot of spikes proteins. Now everyone is aware about the coronavirus. So on the coronavirus you have seen the spikes. Those are the basically the protein of the viruses. With that protein they will attach to our respiratory mucosa, our nasal epithelium and they will attach. Then slowly slowly they will multiply, they will go to the airway and they will infect the lungs. So the flu virus basically uh, this kind of the spike proteins there are two names like the H and N. You might have heard the H1N1, H3N2, those are the various subtypes of the influenza viruses. So mainly broadly uh, the influenza virus is divided into two types A and B, there is C also. But A and B are the most common uh, types of the uh, viruses, influenza viruses which causes the infection to the human. So type A and B both have this H and N and um, uh, type A uh, like if you will consider like this various subtypes. So in the type A there are various subtypes like they are based on the which type of H antigen and which type of N antigen is there. So H1, H2, S3, R4 like that, N1, N2, N3 like that. So there are almost 18 subtypes of the H. So there can be the H18 and there are around 11 to 12 subtype of the N. So like N1 to 12. So you can understand that how many various types of the influenza viruses can be there. So on a gross uh, estimation it might be around 110 to 120 subtypes of the influenza virus is there. So do we need the protection from the all the viruses, all the 100 types of the influenza infection we need the protection? No. Basically uh, the severe most is like the type A uh, and uh, there are around 3 or 4 strain of the type A like the H1N1 or the H3N2. Like H1, H2, H3 and N1, N2 are the most common and the severe uh, type of the influenza subtypes. Uh, so, uh, in the vaccination, the two important uh, subtypes of the influenza type A and two important subtype of the type B are getting covered. So, this vaccine which is presently available in 2023 uh, contains two type of the virus of the uh, uh, influenza A and two subtype of the virus of the influenza B. So, total you are able to get protection from the four important the severe most subtype of the uh, influenza infection. 
Now, this is a common question by the parents that even we are taking the influenza vaccine, we are getting the influenza infection. Why it is like that? So, basically, uh, our aim uh, to give the vaccine to the patient is to protect the severe form of the influenza infection. Influenza can cause uh, much more complicated illnesses like the faster breathing, breathing difficulty, their oxygen level goes down, they require hospitalization and the specifically children when they have the influenza infection they will stop the feeding so they will be get dehydrated and they will get to be get admitted in the hospital for the treatment. So, basically we want to reduce those severity of the influenza infections. That is why when we give the influenza uh, uh, vaccination, you are not going to get 100 percent protection, but you are going to get protected from the severity of the diseases. So, that you will not have to suffer from the like the breathlessness or the low oxygen or you might get hospitalization. So, all those things can be get prevented. So, the many WhatsApp messages will also be in circulation that children should develop their natural immunity through the influenza so that in the future they will not face lot of issues that is wrong. So, first of all the children are considered a high risk for the influenza infections as well as influenza virus complication. So, specifically age group like less than 5 years of the children I strongly recommend to protect them from the influenza infection specifically type A because type A cause more severe illness in the children. Type B is relatively milder. Okay. So, um, so, what I have cleared out is one is that why you should give, uh, why you should take influenza vaccine and second what is our purpose of the uh, giving the influenza vaccine. I have discussed uh, what is influenza virus and what are the types and subtypes of the influenza virus. Now, I will discuss about the what are the signs and symptoms of the influenza infection. In case if you will catch the influenza infection, it is a respiratory virus. So, you have a lot of symptoms related to your respiratory system like the you will have the high grade fever, sometime it will come with the chills, rigors. Um, severe uh, runny nose, uh, your eyes might get swollen, your eyes might have the watering, cough and those are the common symptoms of the most of the respiratory viruses. So, that is why a uh, doctor cannot just diagnose based on the symptoms, he has to examine and if it is required to do the nasal pharyngeal swab which we used to do in the covid infection, those swab is required to diagnose the influenza infection. Suppose, if you are getting diagnosed with the influenza infection, in most of the patients, uh, it does not require to start the specific antiviral medications, but yes, some of the patients require to start the antiviral medicine known as oseltamir. Commonly, uh, the brand name Tamiflu is very popular that can be given. Now, if you will catch the influenza infection, then what you can do at home that is also very important. Once you catch the infection then it is very important that it should not spread to the other family members. So, now the COVID has taught us that um, a mask will help to protect the respiratory infection. So, better you will wear the mask so that you will not spread the infection to your uh, family members in your workplace, in your office place so that you can cut the transmission chain of the influenza infection. Second thing you have to take rest because influenza causes lot of weakness. So, you have to take the rest then you will start feeling better. You have to hydrate yourself well, more water, more liquid, more soup, more juices you have to drink so that you will be get well hydrated. If you have any fever you can take the paracetamol, plain paracetamol is useful for the fever. In case if the temperature goes very high like 39 degree or the 40 degree or 103 or 104 degree temperature you can take ibuprofen also. Some of the symptomatic medications like the nasal sprays you can use to open up your nasal passage. You can do the steam inhalation to open your nasal passage so that your symptoms will start getting relieved. If, if you are considered in a high risk categories, high risk categories means like the less than 5 years of the children, more than 65 years of the age, pregnant ladies, the children who has history of recurrent wheezing, asthma, children who has cancer, children who has immunodeficiencies all those are considered as a high risk for the influenza infection, they will be specifically required the medication like the oseltamivir or the Tamiflu medication which your doctor will advise you. The dose of the medication will be different for the different children, so do not give one dose of the medication to the other child who has already suffered from the influenza infection. 
so it is very 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 common uh, virus and uh, initially when the season starts it's common in mainly in the winter season so beginning of the winter the uh, virus will start circulating into the uh, community few people will get then few people will go to the workplace and uh, school and they will infect the other people and other people will start getting the infections so generally this kind of the epidemic scenario is almost in every year in the season like the uh, northern hemisphere it will from the september to march so september few cases will start coming up it will reach up to the like the december january then the by the february march it will start going down and april onwards when the temperature will increase the virus cannot survive in that temperature so it will be get killed by the te uh, atmospheric temperature itself <coughs> so that's why their infection will start reducing many time what happened that when you already acquired the influenza infection your immunity level goes down very drastically so the bacteria will get a chance to enter into their body and they will get the bacterial infection that is known as a secondary bacterial infection secondary bacterial infection also can cause the severe diseases like the pneumonia influenza itself also can cause the pneumonias uh, if the influenza is not treated on time then you will might have uh, developed the complications of the influenza infections like the faster breathing oxygen saturation level goes down reduced feeding intake specifically in the children they will get dehydrated they will start getting the faster breathing and if it is requires it requires the hospitalization as well so what we have discussed so far influenza what is a virus uh, how it spreads where it spreads what are the signs and symptoms now we will talk about the prevention of the influenza infections so prevention of the influenza infection number 2 one and two one is a mask that will help to protect the others from the getting the influenza infection it will protect you also from getting the influenza infection and second is a frequent hand washing the covid has taught us this too and this too is also very important for the influenza infection third point is the vaccination now the flu vaccination is available flu vaccination um, is basically the seasonal vaccine or it is known as the influenza vaccine or the flu vaccine it is available every year it will be get updated every year so every year you have to take the flu vaccine to protect yourself now this vaccine contains two it is contains two type a subtype influenza and two subtype Uh, b influenza virus uh, subunits so that's why you are getting protected from the four type of the influenza subtypes now this vaccine is given into the muscle the way the other vaccines are given the same way the uh, muscular injection will be given it will be specifically in the children we will give it on the thigh so that they have the lesser pain and the lesser risk of getting the side effect of the influenza a uh, vaccine like the pain will be less uh, uh, swelling will be less uh, skin rash will be less all those thing will be less and second thing we can protect our um, uh, deeper sitting organ uh, by giving it to the thigh because uh, like the previously it was used to be given into the gluteal muscle but there is a one big nerve known as sciatic nerve so while giving the injection we can damage those nerve while in the thigh there is not a major organ or nor there is not a major vein or major uh, nerve which we will damage so that's why we are giving uh, into the thigh into the children now how many doses of the influenza vaccine there are if your child is less than 8 years of the age and if he is taking first time then you have to take the two doses of the vaccine after taking the two dose every year there will be single single dose if the child is more than 8 years of the age only single dose is required whether it is first time or whether it is a new way, new time and every time it is a single dose so even the adults they require just only one dose of the flu vaccine pregnant ladies it is strongly recommended to give the uh, influenza vaccine to the pregnant ladies because the influenza infection and its complications are much much higher in the pregnancy because pregnancy is a weak immunity uh, uh, illness we cannot tell it as pregnancy is a illness but pregnancy is a weak immunity condition so at that time the influenza spread faster it will cause the more complications and it is a risk for the two life mother as well as a baby so pregnancy strongly recommended to give the influenza vaccine now many parents are telling that we had we were heard that there are a lot of side effects of the flu vaccine 
but that is not true basically like i myself i am taking personally uh, every year the flu vaccine and so far some fever or some soreness over the arm where i am taking the vaccines or maybe some dullness for one or two days can be there but on an average the vaccine is quite safe and very minimal side effect uh, we have seen because we are giving to the lot of people and uh, hardly one or two child might develop some kind of the side effect of the vaccine so it is very well tolerated now who are the at the major risk and those who has to take the uh, influenza vaccine as i discussed less than 5 years of the age of the children so after 6 month of the age we can give the flu vaccine so 6 month to 5 years of the age children has to take the flu vaccine more than 65 years of the age because they are also at prone for the risk of the influenza infections pregnancy those who has any kind of the immunosuppressive disease like the hivs they have to take any chronic illnesses like the heart diseases pneumonias uh, bronchial asthmas um uh, cancer uh, situations those who are taking medication which suppress their immunity Uh, specifically the healthcare professionals nurses doctors lab technician they have to take the influenza vaccine to protect themselves as well as the society uh, side effects we have already discussed now there are one one uh, very remote side effect known as gullian barre syndrome that can also happen with the influenza vaccine but the incidence is much much less at around 100 uh, around 100000 uh, influenza vaccine maybe the one person is getting that gullian barre syndrome but otherwise there is not much uh, risk uh, what else yeah what is the contraindications like those who should not take the flu vaccine uh, the who has the previous uh, allergy with uh, any kind of the influenza vaccine yes then it is a uh, strictly contraindicated but on an average everybody can take uh, um, in the previous uh, versions of the influenza vaccine the egg was egg allergy was considered as a contraindication so the children or the adult who has the egg allergy they should not take the uh, influenza vaccine but uh, now with the newer vaccine uh, that risk is also not there only thing that the uh, person who is giving the vaccine has to take the little bit extra precautions and they have to monitor them other than that there is no any major contraindication for the flu vaccine so i think uh, i have tried to cover most of the things related to the influenza seasonal influenza uh, flu virus um, its infections uh, symptoms flu vaccines effects side effects who has to take who can skip all those things i have discussed uh, in this video and before closing uh, this uh, uh, this channel youtube channel is only for the informations i am trying to give you the authentic informations Um, uh, there is no any commercial activities on my YouTube channel. No any promotion videos, nothing. And um, uh, the earning of the this YouTube channel is getting used for the charity in the developing countries, like the some of the India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, African countries where they need some help. The the monetized channel we are using to help them. so you can share these videos so you can uh, ask your family members or your friends to subscribe the channel they can watch this video and if you are first time on the youtube channel then subscribe as well thank you very much